Hey everyone, Jonathan Baylor here. So happy to be talking to you on a site where really demonstrates the importance of resistance training. And what I wanted to share with you today was some, some talking points and some science around the importance of resistance training so that when you get question, specifically two questions, questions we frequently hear, which are, I'm a woman, well, I'm, not, I'm not a woman, but you may hear a woman say this, I'm a woman and, and I don't want a resistance train because I know it's going to make me look like a man. So we'll talk about how we can address that. And also I want to talk about this, this notion of cardio and if just doing cardio is sufficient and how is resistance training really needed. I jog a lot. It's absolutely needed and we'll dig into the physiology of why. But before we get into all of that, let's talk about that first objection I butchered a little bit, which is the very reasonable concern females have, and even some males have, that resistance training will cause us to become too bulky. Now the best way I've found to address this concern, which is a great concern, uh, a lot of women don't want to look like men for understandable reasons, and a lot of men don't want to look like bulldogs. But the key thing is to understand our biology, and to understand that we have a gene called GDF8 which controls a substance called myostatin. And these things together limit the upper bounds of muscular development we can achieve. And the baseline levels of myostatin in almost all women and the vast majority of men make it literally physiologically impossible to naturally build bulky muscles. Now that doesn't mean it's impossible to build bulky muscles. We could use steroids for example and transcend our upper bounds, obviously that's not a good idea. And also there are people who are genetically gifted in the sense that they can develop bulky muscles. But the good rule of thumb is unless you have bulky muscles without resistance training, and there are people like this, you won't develop bulky muscles by resistance training. I, I like to think of muscular bulk a little bit like muscular speed. Stick with me for a second here. We all know there are people who are genetically fast. An Olympic sprinter, for example. And these people are fast without even training. And then if they start training, that's when they become really, really fast. But even without training, these individuals, because they have fast genes, will be faster than the typical person ever could become. Now, just like some people have fast genes, and these are the people who can become really, really fast when they train, there are people that have bulky genes, for lack of better terms, and they can become bulky. But if you don't have fast genes, no matter how hard you try to train, you're never going to become an elite level athlete. Not because you didn't try hard enough, but because you don't have the genetic architecture to support that. The same thing applies to muscular size. You can train all you want, and there's a multi-million dollar industry designed at men who want to get bigger, who can't, simply because they do not have the genetic architecture to support bulky muscles. So just like you can't become an Olympic sprinter by accident because there's genetic factors involved, I promise you, you will not become bulky by accident because there's genetic factors involved. However, if you are already bulky, you can become bulkier, but let's not let that stop us from leveraging resistance training to achieve metabolic benefits that really are impossible via any quantity of cardiovascular exercise. And that's what I want to talk about next. All right, so why is it so important that we don't fear resistance training? Well, it's so important that we, we don't fear working our muscles with resistance because physiology has now shown without question that resistance training actually enables us to do what cardio supposedly does. And because of that, we can achieve a lot better benefits with resistance training. Now, let me explain what I mean here. When people talk about doing cardio, they usually talk about doing things like riding a bike or jogging, and they recommend those types of exercises because they work our big muscles. The thought is if you work your big like leg muscle groups, you will achieve a better me metabolic benefit because you're working more muscles. And that's true. But now here's the challenge. When we dig deeper and really understand our physiology, we see that cardio, because of its low levels of resistance, doesn't actually work the most muscle possible. Again, what it's supposedly doing, working a lot of muscle, it's not actually doing. Let me explain what I mean. So in addition to having certain muscles that are bigger than us others and just different muscle groups on our bodies, right? We have big leg muscles and relatively smaller hand muscles. 
We have different fibers within our muscles. So we don't just have one type of muscle, kind of. We have four types of muscle fibers, and the reason for this is each of those muscle fibers are responsible for different things. So, for example, our type 1A muscle fibers, they enable us to do a type of exercise or type of movement that requires just a little bit of force, but for a long period of time. They're what enable us to talk or walk all day without really getting tired. A little bit of force, long period of time. In contrast, we have another type of muscle fiber on the other end of the spectrum called our type 2B muscle fibers, and in between are our type 2A and our type 2X muscle fibers. And as we move down this spectrum, for example, our type 2B muscle fibers, they enable us to generate a lot of force, but for a very short period of time. Because, of course, there's an inverse relationship between the amount of force we can perform and the amount of time we can perform that activity. This is why we can't sprint for as long as we can walk. We have a fixed amount of energy, and if we use it up all in one powerful movement, well, we can't do a lot of that movement. But here's the key thing. So we understand that we have different types of muscle fibers. If we do cardio or an exercise that we can or have to do a lot of, people do cardio for one, two, sometimes even three hours, by definition, we're only working our type 1A muscle fibers. Why? Those are the only type of muscle fibers that can exercise for that long of a period of time. If we were working our type 2B muscle fibers, we could only exercise for seconds. Just like if you were able to drive your car at 600 miles an hour, you couldn't drive that long just because you'd run out of gas. The same thing works with our muscle fibers, but here's the key thing. If we really want to work all of our muscle fibers and all of our muscles, we want to work the most muscle possible, well then we have to do exercises that require a lot of force. Because when we try to do those exercises, things such as heavy resistance training, our body will try to move the weight with our type 1A muscle fibers and they won't generate enough force. So then it'll bring in our type 2A muscle fibers and they still won't be able to generate enough force. So bring in the type 2X, still not enough. Finally, bring in the type 2B. Now we have all our muscle fibers working together and we move that resistance, but we can only do it for a very short period of time. And here's the key, we are actually working all of our muscle fibers. In contrast, if we're doing something like cardio, that we do for a long period of time, we're just working our same type 1A muscle fibers over and over and over again. It would be like trying to build a, a healthy and attractive body by only ever working your arm muscles. That's not the key. The key is to work all of your muscles, and similarly, the key is to work all of the fibers within your muscles, and that's what heavy and safe resistance training allows us to do. And that's why it's so wonderful, and that's why we need to make sure we're not scared of it at all. Because resistance training, bottom line, actually does what cardiovascular exercise claims to do, and that's enable us to work all of our muscles and our muscle fibers and achieve a dramatic health and metabolic benefit. Thanks so much. Hope you found this interesting. Talk to you soon.